Warning, your cable bill is in the mail. trade agreement turned one year old last week. The leaders of each of the countries marked the occasion in their own special way. President Bill Clinton went out and bagged a prize Canada goose for dinner. <laughs> Prime Minister Chrétien played with his American-made Christmas gift given to him by his wife, Aline. While in Mexico, President Ernesto Zedillo entertained the international financial community. The largest outdoor rock concert in history was held last week in Rio de Janeiro. Vintage rocker Rod Stewart performed in front of a record three and a half million fans for over two hours. The stage, the largest ever built in the world, was so tall that it could be seen as far away as North Korea. There, Korean soldiers broke an official ban on listening to Western pop music by marching atop a mountain and joining in on the chorus of Rod's greatest hits. A bootleg recording and executions are planned for the spring. Many Canadians had a particularly hard time with their hangovers on January 1st this year. They were relying on the traditional hangover remedy, the hair of the dog that bit you. But the dog that usually provides those hairs was indisposed. During a routine breathalyzer test, the dog refused to let go of the breathalyzer apparatus. He was detained overnight. In the cold light of day, he apologized for not being able to assist with the nation's hangovers. But, he added, real friends shouldn't let man's best friend drive drunk. His dog license has been suspended for a month. Last week, a coven of Republicans led by Newt Gingrich took over the Congress in the United States with an ambitious legislative plan. In the first hundred days, the Gingrich-inspired Republican Contract on America promises to eliminate welfare payments to all unwed mothers, give tax cuts to the wealthy, spend more on defense, and get tougher on crime by building more prisons. In the second hundred days, the Republicans promise even more, to eliminate unwed mothers altogether, <laughs> cut the wealthy in on even better deals, spend more than you can count on defense, get even tougher on crime by making all police officers bionic, and making it a law that when you address the Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, you must use the Newt salute. And of course the Republicans are all looking forward to their next big rally, September the 6th to the 12th this year, in Nuremberg, Pennsylvania. Cable companies in Canada gave their customers a New Year's present this past week. Seven new channels were pumped into television sets across the country. For a reaction, we go now to TV watchers Mr. and Mrs. Barnacla. That's Barnacle. Sorry. Mr. and Mrs. Barnacle, how do you like the seven new channels? We hate them. But the cable companies say that if you don't want the service, all you have to do is contact them and you will not be billed. Well, we call them every ten minutes for two whole days, but their lines are blocked, I guess. Well, you could write. Oh, yes, Frank, I'll write, but I'm going to bill the cable company for the time it takes me to do it. I call it negative my time is money billing. I'm charging $750 an hour, Frank, and if they want me to get in the car, it's an extra nine grand. I, for one, like the channels. What do you mean, you like the channels? I mean, I like the channels. I turned on Bravo and found out that Monday night is modern dance night. All dance, all night. We're paying for it. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not, Frank. I believe, Frank, that we are, through this little thing, slashing the American domination of our airwaves. I believe that Literature Night on Bravo will do for Robertson Davies what much music did for Mitsu. Oh, yeah, yeah, except, except Mitsu is a half-naked French girl who makes love to a chair in her video, Frank. While 
Robertson Davies will merely sit in this chair, but it can only help. Thank God. How, how come I can't have a channel, Frank? I'd like to have a license to print money too, you know. Yes, you could have the I'm Too Crooked to Live channel. <laughs> I love Showcase. Reruns of Wojek, ENG, Street Legal, The King of Kensington. I'm delirious. Well, how can your life not be improved by all of that? Yeah, you, you, do you know what I'm going to do, Frank? I'm going to do what King Solomon did. I'm cutting the TV in half. That's Good what night. I'm going to do. <laughs> go ahead. There we go. You'll never get it going anyway. Be no like more discovery down. channel. It's been down no in the basement network. since I gave it no to him more. three years ago, Frank. Just like all the rest of his tools, he doesn't have a clue how to use them. But she still rules the roost. Here's this hour's very own Marg Delahunty. Well, you know what they say. If human poo was worth any money at all, poor people would be born without bums. Hi, I'm Marg Delahunty. Now, according to the Forto Times Index, there's been an increase of weirdness by 3.8%. Now, that must be in the general population, because God knows now men's weirdness has shot up alarmingly, much like the profit margins of Canadian banks. Let's face it, of course, 80% of them are nothing but gang-goozlers. The mouths hanging open, the eyes staring vacantly at reruns of sports on the goggle box. And that's the best of them. Because there's a whole bunch of them who've gotten up off the couch with a vengeance, and they're out goose-stepping around hospitals and clinics, waving signs at pregnant women and screaming St. Paul's letters to the Corinthians at them. And that's when they're not out actively killing in the name of life. Ooh, the gods of irony must be having a field day. After long, long, long years of neglect, Men suddenly have become passionately, even brutally interested in children. Of course, now, a whopping 75% of Canadian fellas fail to make their child support payments, while surprisingly, only 3% of them don't make their car payments. Oh, just male priorities, I guess. The unborn and cars have got it all over. Real snotty nose, back answering, dirty arse, live youngsters. Excuse me. I've got on underwear that is no longer just simply fond of me, but is apparently in love with me. It isn't satisfied anymore with simply being on me. It wants to be in me. <laughs> Jenny Lorty has been released from prison. In 1984, Lorty dressed up in army fatigues and opened fire on the PQ-dominated Quebec Assembly. Now, ten years later, with the PQ back in power and with Quebec once again poised to hold a sovereignty referendum, the powers that be say there is no better time to release Lorty back into society. The federal government denied that Lorty's release is part of an eight-part plan to fight separatism in Quebec and pointed out that the terms of Lorty's parole dictate that he's not allowed to do the same thing all over again. Former Vice President Dan Quayle recently had his appendix removed at the Indiana University Hospital. Quayle, 47, was quoted as saying he just wants the thing out, I don't need it anyway. He was discharged from the same hospital last month after being treated for blood clots in his lungs. Just take the damn things out, he reportedly said, I don't need them anyway. Quayle plans to enter hospital every month for the next several years in order to remove all unnecessary body parts. Next up, neurosurgery. Well, Americans love a comeback. And last week, former mayor of Washington, D.C., Marion Barry, was once again inaugurated to the post. Barry left behind both prison and a crack-smoking habit to again win the seat he was forced to abdicate in 1990. The new mayor campaigned as the candidate of the last, the lost, and the least. Now, lest he lose the love of local lemmings, he lightheartedly leapt into the legislature by a landslide. <laughs> 
For the first time in its 79-year history, Mensa, the International Organization of Geniuses, or Genii, will hold its annual general meeting in Canada. The Canadian meeting has an added twist. It will take place during an event that involves outdoor sports. We join the President of Mensa Canada, Mr. Rupert Rainey. Mr. Rainey, how has the event been going so far? My tongue is stuck to the floor. I'm sorry, uh, I can't really make out what you're saying. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mr. Rainey, it says on your president's profile that you have six doctorate degrees and an IQ of over 250. Do you find it hard being that smart? Yes, well, thank you, Mr. Rainey. Your valiant efforts, I'm sure, will only benefit the plight of geniuses everywhere. Good night. Exclusive. Just what policy is this rising star of the Liberal backbenches picking over? Coming up, the Liberal, the Finger, and the Proboscis on firm copy. Just over a week into 1995 and all bets are off. Every New Year's Eve resolution made has been blown. You're like me. You got up after Christmas, you drove on down to Super Bodies, you went inside, you took the tour, you took out the plastic, you plunked her down and cha-ching, took out a 12-month membership. And guess what? We're never going to enter the building ever again. And we all stopped drinking. Well, of course we stopped drinking. We almost died on New Year's Eve. The light at the end of the tunnel was a paramedic. But that's over with now, and hey, what's Friday without a few beers, eh? The problem is, we have to stop giving up things we're already hooked on. Let's face it, smoking cigarettes and speaking in tongues. Once you start, you'll never stop. We have to learn to love our old habits and just resolve not to start any new ones, good or bad. So, while 95 is basically a complete write-off, here's to success in 96. <laughs> of damn Yankees will soon have a new cast member. Jerry Lewis will be appearing in the classic musical playing the devil. Lewis beat out 60 other actors for the part, including Russian president Boris Yeltsin. Over the past few years in Canada, an increasing number of men's rights groups have formed to combat what one man claims is an epidemic of men bashing. We go now to the two leaders of Men Against Men Against Violence Against Men, Manfred Perdue and Bernardo Manwaring. Mr. Perdue, Ma I'd Molly, like to know... you've got one too many men in our title. That's right, Molly. It's just men against violence. Against men. You see, if we were men against men against men against violence... Against men. ...then we'd be for violence. Against men. <laughs> You'd be talking to someone other than us. Too bad. And now, Mr. Did, did you perhaps really we can mean start... that, Molly? What? The too bad. You're talking to us. Yes, I am. Because that, that hurt. That we really are men. Hurt. You know, we are living, breathing human beings. We're not just apparatus, Molly. <laughs> Mr. Perdue, Mr. Manwaring, don't you think you're being just a little overly sensitive oh, here? Overly sensitive? An affront? Bernardo, be strong. It's so hard. She's like poisonous gas. <laughs> Gee, you are touchy. Now, does your group stand for anything at all, sir? Molly, our cause speaks to the heart of manhood. Tell it, brother. From the hills of western Alberta to the shores of the Gas Bay. Testify. Regardless of race, creed, or model of car. Oh, yeah. One man, Molly, if we can save just one man from hurt. Out with the hurt. From pain. Down with the pain. From bad. Then we've done something, Molly. Something. Well, that was quite a stirring bit of something. Thank you both She's so much. She's still using a tone with us. Cruel. Good Very night. Cruel. The following is a free time political broadcast. On behalf of the Newfoundland Separation Federation, Jerry Boyle. Hello, I am Jerry Boyle. Does your recovery plan for 95 involve economic union with Iceland and the free trade of leather hats?
for volleyballs. Do not dismiss this idea outright. For the people of Iceland have a culture similar to ours. They have interesting sayings, such as, may the sky remain blue. We too have endearing expressions, such as, if it moves, shoot it. People ask me, when are you going to move closer to the mainstream on the issues, Jerry? People ask me, when are you going to move away from your stand against full-scale nuclear war? People ask me, when are you going to move out of your ex-wife's basement? To this, I usually reply, what's with all the questions? Who am I, Alex Trebek? <laughs> but on a serious note, I must admit, Jerry Boyle does not have all the answers. Jerry Boyle does not pretend to have all the solutions. Jerry Boyle is not always able to see the obvious. I seem to have lost my train of thought. In closing, I will pass along a thought for the new year. My grandfather passed along to me. You cannot get to your destination unless you know where you are going. I don't personally know what that adage means, but I think it has something to do with the fact that I don't have a driver's license and live in someone's basement drinking bucket beer. And remember, if you can mark an X in 1995, you are my kind of people. And now it's time for Howie Marinka with Show Jumping. We are here at the Maple Leaf Gardens for the 12th annual Show Jumping thingamajig. We go now to the show jumping area where the horses jump over the fence things for points, if I'm not mistaken. And they're off. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, someone stuffed this bloody ducky. Oh, ow. Put a bullet in this pony. Take the snake to the glue factory. Oh, no. Oh, oh, ow. Oh. And that was Werner von Dunlap on Pretty Girl. A beautiful ride, I think. I don't quite follow the show jumping thing. Uh, you jump the fence and you get points, or you do it really fast and you win, but you're the only one in the race. Or you get around the fence type track thing before the others. Who knows? It's show jumping on a million dollar animal. And let me get this straight. Someone paid one million actual dollars for a horse. A horse. It likes to sleep standing up. A million bucks. An animal that thinks carrots are a delicacy. An animal that lets you nail iron shoes on its feet. A million bucks. Man, oh man, oh man. And now for a look at the year ahead, let's check in with this hour's twin metaphysical technicians, Gertie Lou and Gail Ann Sphinxler. Hello, ladies. Hello. She's Gail Ann and she's Gertie Lou. We, we think. think. But we're, we're twins. twins. Oh, I'm getting a vibration. I see a body in a lake in a barrel. That's where you'll find the body, JB. Oh, <laughs> did you ever love her, JB? Oh. Huh? oh, oh, it's predictions he's looking for. Never mind. Sorry. Forget the Forget. body in the barrel. Put it behind you. Oh, okay. Now, the Missy Sphinxlers, what's your take on the political scene in Canada for 1995? Preston Manning will continue to enjoy enormous power. Popularity, right. especially among stand up comics and editorial cartoonists, <laughs> among whom he is simply known as Goldmine. <laughs> Quebec is not going anywhere, JB. Premier Jacka, Premier Jacka, Domingo, Domingo. Wake up and smell the cafe au lait. Oh, not. yeah. Okay, okay, now what about the financial future? Paul Martin's federal budget will come down, marking the return of many beautiful Depression-era songs such as Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? I, I got, got plenty of nothing! nothing. 
Canadian and that thing's plenty for me. Oh, your dollar. Ooh. We love your Canadian dollar. It's shrinking faster than the Bobby Catola fan club. Uh, we bought a whack of Canadian dollars before Christmas and we used them for stocking stuffers. They were a hit. <laughs> this year, we'll have its share of both tragedy and comedy. <laughs> so, JB, go see someone about that mole. The, the one, one on your... Ask me no more questions, questions. I'll tell you no more lies. Okay. I'm afraid we've run out of time. Be sure ladies. to close your eyes. <laughs> Bye-bye now. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Vladimir Lenin's body has been laying in state since he died in 1924. And now the secret of how the former Russian leader was preserved so well for 70 years has been revealed. Every couple of years, Lenin's body was put in a chemical bath for up to two months at a time, keeping it in tip-top condition. Russian scientists were asked where they got the idea for the preservative chemical bath. They explained the idea, of course, came from Lenin's childhood friend and Rolling Stones guitarist, Keith Richards. <laughs> Well, that's the way we saw the world this week. I'm J.B. Dixon saying to all the members of Parliament, the 6th of February is fast approaching. Before you know it, the holidays will be over and you'll be back in the house. 52 days off for Christmas. An MP's life is all about sacrifice. Good night. Absolutely. Good night. Bye -bye. This is WTN, Women's Television Network. Oh, welcome to the Women's Network. I'm Devoe Capstel Shilers, and I'm pleased and satisfied to be presenting the day's programming to you here at the Women's Network, where most of the programming features, you guessed it, women, and shows about women for, well, you know. At 7 this evening, Cynthia and Diane will be here to chat about the fact that Lisa's sister cleaned out the garage and took everything, including Lisa's skis. And she was going to go skiing this weekend, too, so that's going to be something. Then at 8, the Margaret atwood -thon starts, and I'll be reading aloud from The Handmaid's Tale. And Lisa will be here performing select excerpts with sock puppets. And, you know... You don't have to be a wizard to make a sock puppet. I guess everyone's had at one time or another a button that's come off. But that's just crafts, and this channel promises to be a wee bit more hard-hitting than that. At eight... Oh, I dozed. I dozed right off. I'm back. Oh, yes. Science with Dr. Elizabeth Petrie Dish and her life partner, Francis, and they're here to discuss cellulite. You know, who's got more and who's is worse, and, and they'll be in the sunroom over at Synth's house, and they're going to clean out Synth's junk drawer today. A little touch of paleontology there. Woo! You can go away for a while. We don't have any commercials, but we're going to have a little interlude before we start the day's programming. Coming at you.